you know, if we were in a boat, we would sink. <laughs> in fact, since we're, I, I'll share, I was on a boat in Lake Michigan with hundreds of Girl Scouts when I was in high school and we were in the locks waiting to transition from the river to the lake. And Scotty Pippen was on his boat five rings across the lock and hundreds of girls from all over the United States rushed to one side of the boat. That's how I'm feeling right now. But good morning and welcome to worship at Sugar Grove United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Tammy Scott. It is wonderful to be together in this space and to welcome you to worship those who are joining us from home this morning and those who are joining us in the sanctuary. I guess the challenge next week will be to see who will sit on this side. I do shower. I hope that you know that wherever you've been on your spiritual journey, whatever your faith background might be, you're welcome and we are truly glad to worship together this morning. I do have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. We'll begin with our birthdays and anniversaries. This week we're wishing happy birthday to Doug Kepi, Ryan Nelson. Ryan, I bet you didn't realize you were coming on when we would, <laughs> your mom knew. Scott Eichmeyer, we're wishing you a happy birthday. Mike Perillo, Charlotte St. John, and Zoe Davis. Are there others who are celebrating birthdays this week that we don't know about? All right, then let's sing happy birthday to Ryan and Scott. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ryan and Scott. Happy birthday to you. We are also celebrating a couple of anniversaries this week. Uh, today is Joe and Barb Wolf's anniversary, and so we celebrate with them. And Kristen and Dustin have an anniversary this week as well, and so we wish you a happy anniversary. Uh, Joe and Barb Wolf, for those who may not know, and I should have got the exact number of years, I believe it's 60 something. Um, <laughs> 60 something, but they have lived uh, here on Snow Street um, for 60 years or so. And uh, tomorrow they're moving, they're staying in Sugar Grove. Um, they're moving to the Prairie Point uh, Senior Living Facility behind Aldi. And so um, they're excited for that move, but they wanted to stay in their home to celebrate this last anniversary in that space. So if you know Joe and Barb, I'm sure that they would love to hear from you this week as they celebrate their anniversary and make this transition in moving. And let's hold them in prayer as they do that this week as well. Uh, we continue to worship at 930 on Sunday mornings here in the sanctuary and on Zoom, or you can catch up throughout the week on Facebook as that recording uh, lives on in that space. Um, we have a prayer meeting on Monday evenings at 630. All are welcome to join us. If you have a prayer concern that you would like to uh, share with me or to lift up, you can contact the church office or uh, me and we'll make sure to include that in our time of prayer. You're also welcome to join that prayer uh, group anytime. The Bishop's Appeal is an offering at annual conference and each local church is invited uh, to participate in collecting funds for a designated cause. For the 2022 Northern Illinois Con Annual Conference, uh, the bishop has designated the offering to go toward Ukraine assistance. Uh, the announcement says, we know our God stands with the oppressed and calls on us to support them. The Conference Board of Global Ministries will distribute funds through United Methodist support and relief organizations uh, throughout the Ukraine area. So uh, with other churches in our conference, we'll be collecting a special offering for the Bishop's Appeal throughout the month of May. And in June, Ron and Buzz and I will bring that offering and present it uh, during the annual conference session. Uh, you can give online, just not yet. There's a problem with adjusting. I'm gonna call them tomorrow. I can't get logged in um, to make that a special designation. So sometime this week, and we'll send it out in an email if you'd like to give online or you can uh, send a check to the church office or um, girls, would you put your candles down and maybe we can pass the mission buckets. You know where the orange and green mission buckets are? We'll see uh, if there is some who might like to give uh, today. We will have other opportunities throughout the month uh, to do that as well. There is a friendly competition between districts. Um, so, you know, 
I'll report back how the Prairie South District does. All right, you guys can come and bring those buckets as I finish up the announcement. So if you'd like to give towards the Bishop's Appeal in Ukraine, Hannah and Haley have the buckets. Our children, our Sunday school is back in session. Our children's Sunday school does not meet on the first Sunday of the month, but there are coloring sheets available uh, in the fellowship area. And our adult Sunday school class uh, will gather in the kitchen to continue their discussion on the Lord's Prayer. I'm gonna invite you to save the date. It's almost VBS time. And this year we have a food truck party rolling into town. Our Vacation Bible School will be Sunday, June 12th through Thursday, June 16th from 6 to 7.45 and registration will begin on May 15th. Uh, any teens or adults who would like to help, um, please uh, be sure to get in touch with me. We can use you one night, you can use you all five nights, whatever your availability might be. And then lastly, I want to make sure that you are aware that the family of Karen McCannon has invited us all for an open house style celebration of life for Karen Jojo McCannon. The celebration is going to be held today at Farm Friends in Big Rock from 1 to 4 p.m. So the family invites you to come and share your favorite memories of Karen with her family and friends. There is so much happening in the life of the church and for that we give God thanks. But let's pause and take just a few moments to prepare our hearts now as we make the transition from getting to worship to being in worship. And now I invite you as you're able to stand and join me in our call to worship. As we gather today, we call you our Father who art in heaven. As we gather today, we lift up who you are and what you represent. Hallowed be your name. As we gather today, we seek your ways, not our own. Your kingdom come, your will be done. As we gather today, we say sorry to you and one another. Forgive us as we forgive. As we gather today, we need you. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. As we gather today, we pray, amen. I'd invite you to remain standing and join in singing our opening hymn, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Sky. It's number 173 in your hymnals.
May the peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to greet one another with uh, signs of Christ's love and peace. Feel free to move about as you greet one another. For those joining from home, I would invite you to uh, share the peace of Christ with one another in the chat or the comments. Peace be with you and also with you. I'd like to invite you to join with me in our opening prayer. Our opening prayer is uh, a prayer from the Jewish tradition that Jesus and his followers would have known and perhaps is what uh, led Jesus to invite his disciples and us to pray in the way of the Lord's Prayer. Let us join together in prayer. Exalted and hallowed be God's great name in which the world which God created according to plan. May God's majesty be revealed in the days of our lifetime. 
and the life of all Israel, speedily, imminently, to which we say, Amen. Blessed be God's great name to all eternity. Blessed, praised, honored, exalted, extolled, glorified, adored, and lauded be the name of the Holy Blessed One beyond all earthly words and songs of blessing, praise, and comfort, to which we say, Amen. I'd like to invite the children uh, in the sanctuary to come and join me. I'm going to have you sit in the first pew this morning, and any of the children who are joining from home, if you would gather around your screens for just a few moments. When I can get one of the world's prayer sheets. Okay, we'll make sure you get one. You can get a different one. All right. Uh, last week, we began re reading this book, The Most Important Prayer of All. So I thought we would remember a little bit about the book, and then we'll read a little bit more of it this morning. Do you remember who the book was written by? Yeah. Remember? Adam Hamilton. And he's a pastor. Do you remember who he wrote the book for? His granddaughter. His granddaughter. Do you remember her name? Stella. It says... The most important prayer of all, and if you want to go to the next slide, I think we've got the cover there. Stella learns the Lord's Prayer. So last week, um, we learned that every time Stella spends a night with her papa and Mimi, that's her grandma and grandpa, they hold hands, if you want to go to the next picture, and they pray the Lord's Prayer together. And we're learning about the Lord's Prayer too right now in church. <clears throat> last week, we learned the first line. Our Father who art in heaven. And we learned that when we say our Father, it helps us to think about God as a parent who loves us, right? And when we say art in heaven, we don't mean that God is drawing or painting in heaven, right? But we mean that God is in heaven. And lastly, we learned to hallow something is to keep it holy. So that catches us up, and we're going to read the next page in our book. Can you just find it? Um, so here's the last page of the book. All right, or the next page, not the last page. Mimi said, let's say the next line. You can go to the next one. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What do you think thy means, Stella, she asked. Your, Stella asked. Yes, that's right. And what does thine mean? Yours, Stella said. Yes, that's right. Papa said, God is the king or ruler over everything. He wants us to love him and to be kind and caring and honest and good. When we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we are asking God to help us and others to live in the way he wants us to live and to do what he wants us to do. So let's see if you were listening. What does thy mean? Your. Good. And what does thine mean? Yours. Good job. So when we think about this line of the prayer, we could think your kingdom come, your will be done, which really means that we're asking God to help us and others live as God wants us to live and to do what God wants us to do, right? What are some things that you think God might want us to do? Yeah. Haley. What are some things that God might, what is the thing God might want us to do? Hug people. Okay. Hannah? Love not, hate. Love, not hate. That's a good one. Yes, Haley. We're pretty stoles. I don't know if that is something God particularly is important to God, but God wants us to do things that celebrate and honor God, and my stole does that for me, so that makes sense. What else? Um, build castles. Build castles. To keep people 
to keep people safe. Are there things besides castles that we could do to keep people houses. safe? Houses. <laughs> yeah. What about, what about, you know what I've been seeing a lot of, especially as we walk to and from school because the wind is blowing so much. I see lots of trash. What about picking trash up to help the oh, earth? Umbrella. Oh, where, yeah, use umbrellas. All right. So I want you to do really intentionally think about one thing that you think God would want you to do this week and do that. Do you think you can do that? You don't need to tell me what it is, but do you think you can on purpose do one thing that you think God would want you to do? Okay. Thank you. All right. Before we go, let's pray the Lord's prayer together. Do you need to repeat after me or do you just want to say it together? You want to start it? Okay. Okay, sit up nice and big. So, because we're going to invite everybody to pray with us. All right, go ahead, Haley. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. As the children return to their seats, I'll invite you to join in singing the first verse of Jesus Loves Me. It's number 191 in your hymnals. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the world has been so good. I know he Our scripture lesson this morning uh, comes from both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. In Matthew, we'll be reading chapter 6, verses 8 and 9, and in Luke, verse 22, or chapter 22, verses 41 to 42. I'll be reading from the CEB, but please feel free to follow along in whatever Bible translation you might have. Beginning with Matthew chapter 6. Don't be like them, because your father knows what you need before you ask. Pray like this. And then in Luke chapter 22, Jesus withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. He said, Father, if it's your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will but your will be done. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Everyone prays that this is the news. The news of tragedy and yes, the prayers. We pray together in the world. Will you pray with me? 
Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day and for this opportunity to be gathered together in worship as your church, as your children. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears now, O oh God, that we might each hear the message that you have for us this day. For you alone, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, we opened this new sermon series with the beginning phrase of the Lord's Prayer. And we thought about how prayer is meant to open our hearts so that God might use us for God's work in the world. And I pointed out particularly the significance that Jesus invites us to pray our Father, not my Father. This is a prayer for the body of Christ, not for us alone. We were also reminded of the importance of keeping God's name holy. And that some of the ways that we do that is by reflecting God's love and goodness in our words and our actions. And so this morning we turn to the second line of the Lord's Prayer. And because Adam Hamilton is such a great storyteller, I'm going to share this story with you from the opening of chapter two in his book, The Lord's Prayer. He writes, <clears throat> I'm reminded of a story I once heard about a Republican and a Democrat candidate for office who were meeting in a town hall debate. In the course of the discussion, the subject of religion came up. The Republican candidate said to the Democrat, I'll bet you $20 you don't even know the word to the Lord's Prayer. The Democrat responded, I'll take your bet. I do know the word to the Lord's Prayer. Great, said the Republican, let's hear it. The Democrat responded, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. The Republican looked stunned and then took out his billfold and handed his opponent $20 saying, I can't believe you actually knew it. It's an old joke, he says, but it points to the struggle that many people have with this prayer, not simply forgetting the words to the Lord's prayer, but even if they remember them, not fully comprehending their meaning. That's particularly true in the second line of the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we look at this second line, I want to draw your attention to the same words that I pointed out to the children this morning. Thy and thine, meaning your and yours, which also happen to be opposite of my and mine. You might remember last week, I said that our prayers were to direct and change our hearts, not God's. Well, this part of the Lord's Prayer is meant to help us shift from focusing on all of the things that we want, the things that we think we need, and to begin to shift our focus to centering our words and actions on the things that God desires from us and for us. I want you to listen as I add a little extra emphasis on that, those words, thy and thine. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the glory forever. Amen. Not my or mine, but thy and thine, as we invite and open our hearts to what God desires. That may be the easier part of this line to understand. What does it mean when we pray for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
The first thing I want to make sure you hear me say is that not everything that happens in our lives or in our community or in our country or in our world is God's will. So often in the face of a tragedy, whether personal or worldwide, we or others will say something like, it must have been the will of God. So I'd like to challenge us to remove that phrase from our vocabulary and give us courage to speak up and speak out if we hear someone else say those words, especially when talking about a tragedy. Friends, God created us with our own free will, our own ability to choose, and we make choices, hundreds, no, probably thousands each and every day. Some of our choices are in line with God's will, but not all of them. This line of the Lord's Prayer is a reminder for us to refocus, to re-engage, to reimagine what God's will is for us and for our world. And then comes the challenging part, making choices and decisions that align with God's will. I'm going to conclude with the closing that Adam Hamilton uses in his chapter, Whose Will Be Done? He writes, as we read our news feeds and watch the news, so many of the stories we see should drive us to our knees to pray this prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then in praying this prayer, we are driven back to our feet and out into the streets as agents of God's work to answer this prayer. Racism and racial injustice, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Global warming and environmental concern. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Poverty, food and housing insecurity. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The war in Ukraine. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This is only a glimpse into a, a short amount of time thinking about this second phrase. And so I'd encourage you to spend some time thinking about what God's will is, what God is calling you to do to participate in making God's will happen here on earth as it is in heaven. And if you'd like some further conversation about what that might look like, Buzz will be leading a conversation uh, that'll go a little bit more in depth into some of these uh, conversation ideas in the kitchen following, um, I'm assuming some fellowship time, grab some cookies and coffee and uh, join him in the kitchen. But friends, this week we pray, oh God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
We have an opportunity to share our joys and concerns with one another on the back of your bulletin. You'll see that we continue to pray for Lisa Cassie Adams, friend who is uh, being treated for brain cancer and for Anders Erickson, uh, who's home recovering still from his bone marrow transplant last summer. Are there other joys or concerns that you would lift up? Uh, those here in the sanctuary, if you have joys or concerns at home, feel free to add those in the chat or comments. Julie? Thank you. Julie asks for prayers for a great nephew, Landon, who's 12 and has um, muscular dystrophy and is beginning to have more difficulty with mobility and walking. Anyone else? All right, then I invite you into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, remind us this day that you are not only creation's architect, but you are the babe who cried for food, the teenager who knew loneliness, the adult who felt the rejection of loved ones. Hallowed be thy name. Yours is the name spun by the stars. Yours is the name whispered by the dying. Yours is the name written on our hearts. Thy kingdom come. May it be a kingdom of peace, not prejudice. May it be a kingdom of sharing, not grasping. May it be a kingdom of hope, not hurting. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your word be more than print on a page. May your justice be more than a wish in our hearts. May your will become our deepest desire. Give us this day our daily bread. Let us taste it in the hugs and kisses of loved ones. Let it fill us in the empty moments of our lives. Let it slip out of our hands to mend the brokenness of our world. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive others. May those who have hurt us find a welcome in our hearts even as we have found our home in yours. And lead us not into temptation, 
turn our hearts from the seductions of our world and the simple pleasures that turn us from you. Keep us from thinking we are so important that we ignore those around us, but deliver us from evil, not just great evils of war and hunger, but from ingratitude, self-love, pride, all those little evils that do such great harm. For thine is the kingdom, our heart's true longing, and the power which you set aside to serve us in weakness and the glory which we would mirror in our lives, our bodies, our minds, our souls, this day and every day, forever and ever. Amen. In these next few moments, we have an opportunity for us to be blessed and to bless God through music. So let us give God thanks for the gift of music and for our amazing music team of Kim Nelson and Sheldon Burkhart. You can find this hymn on number 68 in the hymnal. I'm going to play it once. You're going to sing verse one and then keep the hymnal open so you can follow along and you can sing it if you'd like. I do have the words. Thank you. 
where they are. Just wanted to read that to you in there. You see, it said 777 days. We've last had the choir run off. Now you might wonder, well, we could have had it happen previous to this. Maybe. Maybe not. A lot of things have been going on in the world. And it's one of those things where there's no real answer. Talking about I will, what was the answer? It kind of comes all down to my four star words for these small four years. You see, flexibility is the one. Well, that's obvious. Waiting, very obvious. Trust and direction. I've been waiting for direction. Know what to do. It's, it's either so cool or for this. How do you know what to say? How do you know what to do? Well, that said, it needs to be so many words speaking through our star words that maybe it was time for trust. And so when this came about to come home, we knew we'd be doing some music, pick the song for Ryan and I see. And that grew in blossom. It just became a parrot on my heart that took the right time to bring the choir back. And I can't be more thrilled. Not only is this our first time back, but this is completing our 1920 year because in May it's always choir Sunday. So this is May of 2020, and I'd like to thank the choir for their. <laughs> And we'd like to invite you back in September when we get together and get to bring the whole choir back so we know the people that would like to enjoy these that. We will be very flexible <laughs> with what we need to help bring this choir back because it is really amazing. And if I start bawling, it's okay. I already cried for a moment ago. And that is my biggest joy for today. <laughs> Thank you. 
Aren't you glad you came to worship this morning? I sure am. I'm glad I came. I, I'm glad you came too. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. And thank you for all of the ways that you have continued to support the life and mission and ministries of this congregation. Your offerings this month empower ministry within our congregation and respond to the needs of our community. Our offerings also support the work of discipleship ministries through the United Methodist Church to resource those involved in ministry with youth and young adults. This includes the quadrennial youth gathering, which will be held next year in Daytona Beach, Florida. Youth 2023 continues a tradition that traces back to the first event held in 1988. Ministries like these happen thanks to the way the people of the United Methodist Church live and give connectionally. And so this morning, I invite you to give generously as we worship God through sharing our gifts, tithes, and offering. In addition to the plates that will come around in just a few moments, you can also uh, give by visiting our website, sugargroveumc.net forward slash giving to make a gift online, or you can mail a check to the church office. At Sugar Grove, United Methodist Church offering is an opportunity, not an obligation. So if you're unable to give today, just know that we are so thankful to be together in worship and celebrate coming home again. But for our church family and for those who are able, we invite you to give with a generous heart because giving to the church is one of the ways that we respond to how we see God at work in our world and in our lives. Sheldon has a special offering for us this morning and I invite the ushers to come and receive our offering. Thank you. 
you to join with me in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Forgiving God, people give for so many reasons, guilt, joy, obligation, gratitude, obedience, hope, control, thankfulness. Remind us of your call to examine everything that we have. After all, our money and possessions are really gifts from you. You call us to use them wisely, to share them openly, to give them generously. So thank you for this celebration of giving. Receive this offering and release us from the foolish temptation to believe that it is best spent on ourselves. Amen. You may be seated. All are invited to God's table. All are welcome to participate in the fullness of God's abundant, healing, reconciling meal. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church. All who desire to grow in their relationship with God through Jesus are invited to come. <laughs> So come and feast. All is ready. For those of you who are worshiping with us from home this morning, I would invite you to uh, reach out and find a time where you could invite me to your home or you could come to the church to receive and participate in this holy meal. In order to fully prepare our hearts to receive all that God is offering, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 13 or to follow along on the screen and to join with me in our prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup again, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, the almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us join together praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, you're going to be invited to come forward by the center aisle. I have uh, cut pieces of real bread. You will receive uh, a piece of bread from me. If you need gluten-free, please just let me know. And then on each of these tables to the side of me are small cups of juice. I invite you to uh, pick up and take one of those cups. Uh, you can pause here at the front and 
uh, partake of the communion elements together, the bread and the, the juice, or you can take them to your uh, seats by the side aisle. There are baskets on the floor if you would like to deposit the plastic cup if you uh, choose to take communion here at the front of the sanctuary. If you uh, need to remain in your seat or you feel more comfortable remaining in your seat, once everyone has been served, I will come and serve you in your seats. Friends, the table is prepared, all is set. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Frank, I'm so sorry.
Would you please join with me in our prayer after receiving? Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Raise us to new life through this sacrament. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to stand as you're able and join in singing our closing hymn, I Am Thine, O Lord, number 419. <laughs> We've sung and had our hearts filled to overflowing. I invite you as we conclude our time and worship to continue filling your hearts and your bellies with a time of a fellowship in the fellowship area. But now, friends, go and be the light and light of Christ to the world. Amen.
Going for it. Are you going to be here next week? I will show you. 